time and again. Episode 4, Season 2, Jib, Vampire, Jungan, the new driver, the new gopher, Jungan the gopher. Over the next week, Jungas taught about buying the gold, parceling it up, the addresses he sends to in the UK. And apart from that, he's getting the car out occasionally and driving Jib around shopping and to the supermarket and going to get stuff for her. She has to go and buy a new laptop because she left her laptop in the cafe in the UK, gave it to one of the other girls to use. Mm. So, she goes off and buys a new laptop. Top of the range, of course. Junga settling into the job, fine. Get, get on, getting on with Jib very well. Jib decides, yeah, we're going to move you into the second room in the condo. Keep him close to her. He's there all the time. He's not allowed to drink in the week, but at weekends or a couple of days a week he's got off, he can go and have a drink and wander about and do his own thing. She's not fussed if he brings a girl back. So he moves in. He's in. Jib's flat. There they are. Near the river. Yawa Rad Chinatown. Cars secure downstairs. Elders are back in the UK. Up to their usual tricks. UK, mentioning the UK. The lawyer for John. He starts finding some little holes in John's story and starts pushing him a bit about Jib's work, what she was doing. You know, he'd, she'd spent two years at college and then she was working at this cafe. He finds out of John, which, which cafe, where is it, what's, what's that job? He can't find bank account details for her in the UK. No luck there. He gets all the information from John's mum's account come through. But he still doesn't know where, when where Jib was when she took, transferred all the money. He needs to try and pinpoint it exactly because if the story is going to be chasing this money back, he needs to know that John was nowhere near the computer or if it was more than one computer. He needs IP addresses and things. But there was only the one computer in John's house. So he's on to the bank again, technical department, start tracking down see if they can pinpoint each transaction where it was made on the computer there was only a few those transfers but double checking all the atm withdrawals are on the documents where which atm so he's really digging deep this lawyer really digging deep bangkok jib jungle everything's fine Elders UK, fine, everything is going as normal. In comes a new character, Patea. American guy, 37 years old, musician. Been to Patea six, Thailand, six, seven times, each time six months at a time. Rest of the time he's gigging around the world. Plays guitar. That's his living. Makes good money. He's in Pater again. And he's got a condo he's rented for three months. Top of Walking Street. So a long beach road into Walking Street. Straight along the other end. Some apartments there. Really nice guy. He doesn't do all the bars, he doesn't take girls every night, he's not into that. Once a week maybe, he'll get a girlfriend. But he's there for the music, for the excitement, atmosphere, people, loves the weather. Casey, his name? Casey is, uh, loves the go-go bars. And in the evening, he frequents the same couple of go-go bars. The one is just off Walking Street in a little alley to the side, cold is like alley. There's a couple of go-go's down there. And he goes to this one quite a bit. Really likes it, the girls are nice. 
doesn't take the girls from there, just goes in, drinks, it's got the right music for him, and he just loves watching the girls dance. Keeps going in every couple of nights into this one, um, starts getting friendly with the girls. One night, the girls, a couple of the girls, um, it's a birthday and not many customers in there and you can see they're getting a bit cheesed off. The one girl, very attractive, he does like her, um, but he's not sure about taking her out of a go-go bar, you know, he thinks, oh, I don't know. Oh, it's another Moy, <laughs> another Moy, different Moy, her name's Moy. Anyway, he chats to these girls all the time in there. It's just a Moy, what's the problem? It's birthday, she says, and want to get out, no customers. It's just tell you what, there's three of them, quite likes, but Moy likes. I'll pay your bar fines. Pays the bar fine for these three and says, go and have fun. Get out, I'm not taking you, don't want you now. Just paying your bar so you can go and have your party and fun. Girls love him, this is amazing. And they say to him, okay, come with us for food, come on. And he pays the bar fine, pays his tab. Mama San knows what he's doing and loves it. He's a Jack Daniels drinker, loves that Jack Daniels whiskey. So he goes out with them and he gets a Thai food with them. And then they scoot off and he heads back to his apartment later. Over the coming few weeks, he's in that bar a lot and he bar finds them a couple more times. And again, they go out for food, getting quite friendly. In fact, the one night they stay out all evening together, girls all end up back at his apartment and just crash in there. No aerobics, just just crash, becoming good friends. And this Moy, um, he really likes her, very nice, very attractive. She, when she's out of the go go bar, she dresses really nice, quite upmarket, in fact. Her English is really good. He's in the go go. One night, the Mama San comes up to him and says, what do you think to those foreigners? Are they good customers? Pointing across the bar and he's, don't know, but he just gives his opinion. Mama San started confiding in him. And uh, yeah, getting really pally with the girls, the Mama San and everybody. Really nice. Maybe two or three days later, Mama San in that go-go bar comes up to him, sits down says uh, we're going to a party this weekend nice posh house um, and Moy is coming would you like to come with us it's a Thai party free food free drink it'd be nice for you and he thinks well, okay you know he's not a cheap child he loves life he thinks yeah okay and it's on the Saturday morning and she says come to the go-go bar at about 11 o'clock and we'll all go party together, dress nice. Come Saturday morning, Casey comes down, he's quite well presented. He's bought a bottle of JD, brand new bottle, just in case to give to the host of the party. He doesn't know who they are or what they are. It's the go-go bar, it's, it's open, but it's not open to customers. The cleaners are in there, goes in and Mama San comes. Morning, Moy's there, dressed really nice really really nice and there's another girl not dressed as nice anyway go out to the go-go bar and pulls this black mercedes s-class really nice chauffeur driven Whew, what's this all about thinks kc this is rather nice he gets in the back with Moy and the Mama San and the other little girls chucked in the front. See, when they get thrown in the front, you know it's not good for them. <laughs> Off to a party, big house. You know where this is going. Which house it is. It's like the Hollywood house. It's the Mafia Godfather house. It's Lex house. Where's all this going, the connections? So, arrive at the house. Casey's like, wow, pillars at the front, fountain, all the same, it's just amazing. In they go, through the doors. Again, there's 20, 30, 40 people there. 
KC doesn't see any fairings at first, but then notices one on the far side. Um, and then you can see through some doors at the back into the garden, he sees another fairing out there. So it doesn't feel too bad, there's a couple of fairings. And they go in, and the one girl with Moy, uh, Moy, scoot off through the back, heading off into the garden. The mama son is with Casey. This uh, elderly, well dressed lady comes over, Lek. Mama son introduces Casey to Lek, and Lek, uh, Casey gives Lek the, as the host, gives her the bottle of JD, Jack Daniels, and says hi, weighs her, weighs her. And Lex says to him, welcome, it's free drink and food, help yourself, enjoy yourself, have a wander around, meet people, nice to meet you. And off she goes, and Mama Sam pushes Casey towards the back door. Everything seems to happen in the garden, you know. They've got gazebos out there and they've got umbrellas, because it is hot. It's the only part of grass at the house, everything else is like sand. And again, he comes down the, the regal steps at the back of the house. And he notices that boat and there's the swimming pool. Lots of girls in the pool and around the pool. Scantily dressed and there's just couples talking everywhere. A lot of expensive suits or shirts and tie guys. And he, the one farangs with a nice Thai woman, he notices. Um, and then ahead he can see this one farang who's uh, quite tall, athletic build. He seems to be hovering around another side woman. And you come out, waiter comes up, gives him a drink, and he's like, have you got JD, give me some whiskey. Off he goes, comes back with a whiskey for him a few minutes later. Mama Sam pushes Casey down to the table where Moy sat with her friend. And then the Mama Sam leaves them, wanders off. Casey's sat there just looking around thinking what an amazing house and gardens it's a bit of a different party than he's used to and he's, he's such a lovely guy you know he's just great a few Thai men look at him and smile and wave and nod at him he's having a great time this is like free booze food keeps coming around on platters anyway a couple of minutes later this really attractive lady comes across very well dressed dark long hair Eyes like sharks. Shark eye, wait, that killer look. And uh, Moy steps up um, and uh, weighs her and weighs her. Um, and gives her a cuddle. The other girl, this woman just waves the other girl away. And the other girl just scampers off. Then another pretty girl comes over and Moy goes and cuddles this other girl and she's really well dressed and she says turns to Casey and says this is my cousin and then this is my auntie my auntie Jib so this is Jib in front of Casey and it, is it Jib's daughter Oof, what was supposed to be I don't know and Moy anyway Moy and this very nice girl sit next to Casey on each side Jib says hello nice to meet you and pleasantries and all that. Then she sort of half turns away from him and says to Moy, I'm really sorry, um, this weekend I've got to work, I can't take you on the trip. Um, shopping trip to Singapore, I'm sorry. Something's come up. And Moy's like, oh dear, I was so looking forward to that. Casey's there, shopping trip, Singapore, I didn't know about that, Moy never told me, but why would she tell me? And Jib says, see you later, and turns around and starts walking away. And Casey says to Moy, what's that, shopping trip? And Moy says, yeah, me and uh, my cousin, we're going to Singapore this weekend for three days, shopping. And Auntie Jib was going to take us. She booked it all and everything. So we're looking forward to that. I mean, Casey's never been to Singapore, and it's meant to be expensive and nice and everything. Anyway, as Jib's walking away, she stops. Auntie Jib, hmm. and she turns around, and she comes back. She says, "Actually, um, what's your name, Casey?" She says to Moy, "He's a good friend of yours." And Moy, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So, 
Casey, would you like to take um, Moy and this other girl on this Singapore trip? You could look after them. Um, I'll pay your airplane ticket and accommodation, give you some money for spending them. You could take them, because I've already booked the hotel and everything. Do you fancy that? And I'll have to catch you up on the next one, guys. Would you fancy a free trip to Singapore with two beautiful women?